So I love post-apocalyptic world building and I love the genre and I thought I'd just make a video really, I haven't really planned it too much, but I thought I'd make a video on why I love it in the hopes that maybe it might give people some ideas with their own world creations because you don't necessarily need to be writing a post-apocalyptic book or genre to have post-apocalyptic elements in it. So, you know, when you're developing a world, it doesn't need to be the focal point of the story. So, for example, in mine, it's post-post-apocalyptic, so the world and landscape has changed because of the events, but it's not really the sole focus of the story. It's more character-driven than anything. <laughs> now, I'm in no way an expert, but you have the Wheel of Time series and you have the Badlands series, where there are post-apocalyptic events that have happened in the past, but it, they're not really that relevant to a certain degree in the current story following the current characters. I would say that most people don't see them with those post-apocalyptic elements in it, because when you sort of think about it, your mind immediately goes to things like The Road, Walking Dead, and things that are set in a sort of a more modern or contemporary setting. And that's where sort of the I don't know, traditional view of post-apocalyptic stuff sort of sets in. But yeah, it's good to know that you can sprinkle it into other genres and things just to sort of add depth and another layer of world building. And why I love it so much is because, you know, you can have the ancient buildings and you can have the contemporary buildings and then you can have the new post-apocalyptic buildings that are either going to be bodged together with bits of metal and maybe some concrete or maybe there has been some sort of event that's happened where they have sort of better tech and they have a completely different style of architecture. Maybe aliens were the apocalyptic event and with them came the technology to then develop further. So they're actually, the people in that society are, are now better off than before that event. Uh, in the sort of the era that your apocalyptic event actually happened in. And also I like the fact that you can mix in different modes of transport and weapons. So you could have people with swords driving cars and people with guns riding horses. And obviously depending on your world, they will be sort of isolated in separate regions and won't really know anything about the other lot. They won't even know guns are a thing or swords are a thing. I mean, swords are probably more likely to be a thing because, you know, they're just blades, but... Um, and it also depends where you set your world setting in. I love the mix of stuff that you can sort of bring together because when you write scenes like that, you don't really know where it's gonna go because obviously some people aren't gonna be aware of everything. And when they find things, they're not gonna know how to use it. And also it can just sort of create some very fun moments where, I mean, I've got some moments that I'm writing currently where there is a variety of weapons and it's interesting in how you're sort of trying to figure out the scene to make the most of the weapons that are involved. And it adds that slightly different dynamic of like, instead of everyone just having guns, there is that mixture. And there is those different fighting styles or action pieces or moving pieces in your book where you are sometimes forced to make it more dynamic and push into a different direction because of the sort of the mix of things and items that a various amount of characters actually have. And for me, that with world building, that's just that's just the, the sweet spot, just the, the old and the new and the, the, you know, the insanely new, the things that are sort of high tech, all sort of coming together and seeing how things are gonna pan out. Uh, I mean, especially when you add into the mix, if you do have an apocalyptic thing, a creature or weather, if you sort of start adding those into the mix as well, where the landscape is perhaps a little bit more hostile or there are certain animals that are about, <laughs> your weapon then becomes very important. So does your mode of transport. And you know, if someone's got a car and a couple of other people have horses, you know, which is the better option to take? Because I mean, sure, the horse could run out of breath, but then the car could run out of fuel. And if you don't know about the fuel, maybe the horse is the better option. But then again, you know, if you're running away, is a horse as fast as a car? Depends on the car. Anyway, I digress. Essentially, well, I'm just making this video because I just love post-apocalyptic world building and that's, that's pretty much it. So yeah, having to adapt the remains of a society into the new world that it is, is always interesting to think about. And that's just one of the things that attracts me to post-apocalyptic writing. Um, yeah, I think that's it for this video. I just wanted to talk a little bit about why I like post-apocalyptic stuff and maybe something I said somewhere will be like, oh yeah, that's a good point. I mean, maybe it isn't, maybe it is. I don't really know. I'm just sort of faffing around, really thought I'd make a video and um, 
haven't planned it and you can probably tell that I haven't so no worries but yeah I think that's it for this video that's what you get for not planning it which um you know maybe some of this was useful I don't really know but we'll see how it goes but yeah what attracts you to the genre that you write in what are your favorite bits of the world building or the character building that you enjoy most feel free to comment in the description below and I will see you in the next video